Hey guys, welcome to Unit E, in which we will be working with inserting and working with hyperlinks. Uh, to get started with, we're going to talk about hyperlinks, which are more commonly known as links uh, on your web pages. Uh, and a hyperlink is just text or another web page element that users can select to open another document containing relative document. This hyperlinks enable you to uh, integrate the contents of a website with anything available on the web. You integrate other pages into a website by creating these links between the pages that are both related documents and to relevant information available on other websites on the internet. Hyperlinks also provide us the ability to present options for more information to users while displaying only a small subset on the screen at a time. And you guys have, you know, searched around the internet for years, I'm sure, and you know, virtually every website includes a set of links for moving between the web pages on the site. This design element is known as the navigation bar, or more commonly known as the nav bar. And the navigation bar usually occurs near the top of a page. And you'll see an example of this on figure E-1 in the text. You can also see the navigation bar sometimes along one of the sides of a web page. When working with the navigation bar, a navigation bar should maintain the same location and appearance on every web page in a website in order to give the users a reliable way to move between pages and feel more comfortable using the website. You'll notice on some larger websites, they also include a second set of links at the bottom of the page for information that most users may need only occasionally, such as like a website or a company's privacy policy or contact information for a company or that organization. When we're working with the hyperlinks, you'll notice that the element we're going to use is the A element. So the tag pair would be the, uh, the A, and then ending the closing tag would be with the forward slash A. You get lots of practice with this. You can link to other documents in an A element in two ways. Whether you use a URI, you're creating an absolute link, which is full and complete address to the target document on the web. In some situations, however, it makes a lot more sense to just create a relative link, which gives you only the path and file name information necessary to locate the target document based on the location of the current web page. Generally, web pages on a small website almost are always share the same folder on a web server, so it's a lot more efficient to just create those relative links when creating your navigational bar. As we move around in our text here, we'll skip over some of this information that you can just read on your own. And we're going to get started with our customer's Lakeland Reads B&B website. We're going to create a navigation bar at the top of the web page. So this week while we're working, we're going to start out with our page that looks you know, pretty plain like this. And we're going to end up with a site that has the navigation bar and we can navigate around in our web page to different other pages we created as well as an external link for checking the underground weather. A lot, big difference. All right, so let's get started. All right guys, so first of all, we're going to work on our navigation bar and we've got about nine steps we're gonna work on and you can follow along in your text. I won't always go through each step individually, but uh, when we get to complete each part, I'll make sure to show you the effects of the changes we've made so that you can see that as you're doing it, you've got those changes made and everything worked okay. Go ahead and open up your data files folder so that you have all the files open that we'll be working with for this unit. And we'll get started with our first step, which is to open our HTML1.html from our folder which as you can see I already have done. There's the local file that I have open. The next instructions are to go through our HTM files and rename them for our usable names for our website. So let's go ahead and go through that. This one becomes our 
index.html. E2. Now becomes our about us file. Change E3 now. That becomes rooms. Let's change E4 to reserve. Now let's change our CSS sheet to our usual Lakeland. And we've got all those changed. Let's go ahead and edit our index.html file. And we normally do that with Notepad. Let's go ahead and create a new line beneath our H1 element. Find our element there. And we are going to go ahead and put a div tag or division tag into our code here, which is just used to group block elements to format with our CSS sheet. Go ahead and got that added there now. Next thing we're going to do so let's go ahead and identify this block. We're going to hit enter again underneath our division tag. And let's go ahead and put our identifier there in for main navigator. Hit enter again. two spaces sorry let's indent two spaces let's go ahead and type the word home then press the space bar let's use the pipe symbol which is just about the inner key press enter again let's repeat this to include about us, rooms, reservations, local weather, and directions. There we go. Since directions is our last one, we do not need to, to include a pipe symbol. Um, you'll notice that the pipe symbol just creates separation between the text for our different links. All right, let's go ahead and add our closed paragraph tag. Our alignments there. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and add another line and in our division tag. And now we have that. We've made sure all of our open tags have closed tags. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create some relative links for the pages we just identified. So we'll go up there and we will use our a tag to define this hyperlink. Once again, these are used to link from one page to another. Let's go ahead and go up to here to the left of home. And let's add that code. We have our A tag that references our index.html as our home page. Now that we've added the home there, we need to go ahead and close that tag. We'll go to the right of home and we will close our A tag that defines our hyperlink. Let's go ahead and do that for each of the following and that should conclude all of our completed code for those links that we created. Once again those are relative links. Let's go ahead and save our work now. And we are going to go ahead and open our index HTML in our browser, or if you already have it open, refresh it to see the changes that have been made. All 
time point to an area, different area that I'm working in. Sorry about that. All right, let's go ahead and open it now. There we go. That looks a lot better. And you should see that this is pretty similar to figure E-4 in the text. And we were able to navigate to another page. We have to go back because we haven't built the navigation into these other pages yet. Hopefully you can feel good about the changes you've made and now you've made a semi-working website. Now that we've worked with some relative links, let's go ahead and move on to the next section where we'll be creating some absolute links. Now when we're working with absolute links, uh, it's important to know that whenever you want to link information to another website, you must definitely use absolute links. We'll work on those now. Let's go ahead and open up a page and we're going to go to a site that provides some current weather conditions. We're going to use wonderground.com. All right, let's type in Marble, Minnesota in the, in the search box and then press enter. Now that we have that page open, let's go ahead and copy this address. Go ahead and select that, copy. And we are going to paste that or put that into our index.html file. So let's go ahead and open that up and we will paste that information there and create our absolute link. Well, looks like I skimmed over the unit and I forgot to add the local weather information so let's go ahead and add that now. Enter. There we go. Now we have our local weather in there. Save that. Now if we open that back up we should see the local weather has now been added to our navigation bar. Let's go ahead and open our index.html and there's local weather as we should have had to begin with. Sorry about that, guys. Let's switch back to our editor now. Now that we have it there, let's go to the left of the L in local weather. We're going to go ahead and put our A tag in there for our hyperlink. Now we will go ahead and paste hyperlink information, the URI that we just copied. There we go, we've pasted that. Now let's close our tag. So just after the phrase local weather, go ahead and close this tag. There we go, now we've finished that. Alright, let's get some driving directions now. So let's go back to our browser and let's go to look at some Google Maps, maps.google.com. There we go. Now we've got that opened up. Let's go ahead and get some driving directions. Let's enter Marble, Minnesota again. Now it's bringing up that. Let's go ahead and click on the directions or get directions. Let's go ahead and I don't really need to do that. Since people will put their own starting address in, we're just going to go ahead and copy our link here in the top in our address bar so just go ahead and copy that and let's go back into our index file and let's just go ahead and paste that and for our directions just like we did with our weather
Okay, guys, now we got that added. Clean mine up a little bit here. Got a little crazy there. Now your URIs may be a little different. It's uh, as long as they're functional, that's what matters. And make sure to always close up the end of your tag there. Let's go ahead and save our work. Let's go ahead and open our index.html in our web browser and let's go ahead and test the local weather and the directional links to see the changes now that we know that our absolute links are working out and that they're no longer unlinked. So let's go ahead and refresh that. All right, before our directions was not linked, plus we were missing the weather. So let's go ahead and refresh for changes to take effect. So if we've got an error right here, hopefully you don't have that same error. But as you can tell, the local weather is not showing up here. So I just need to go back into my editor and see what silly mistake was made. Go back here, let's see. All right, it's pretty simple to see, guys. See that I don't have my title, local weather, separated. There we go. We'll put the greater than sign back in, and that should fix everything. Go ahead and save. Go back in. I'll refresh. Lo and behold, there's the title, and the link is now tied in. Okay, that one worked. Hopefully yours did as well. Directions. Should take me to Google Maps. I see Marble, Minnesota. Looks good. So at this point, if all of your links are working well, great job, everybody. We'll just go ahead and move on from creating our absolute links, which we finished there. And now we will start doing some styling links with our cascading style sheets pseudo classes is the next section that we're going to go to in our text all right guys good job on the previous work now next let's see how we can use our cascading style sheet to style the links we've created it's good to note here that our linked elements have four different possible states uh, those are detailed in table e2 for your link if it's been visited you hover over it and a link that is currently being clicked. So using our CSS pseudo classes you can create our cascading style sheet styles to change the format of a link depending on which date it is. When we use the term pseudo class um, it's a categorization of a web page element that's based on a relationship or the condition of the element at that given moment rather than a static property value that will never change. So let's go ahead and create some pseudo classes for the Lakeland Reads BNB navigation bar to maximize contrast with the site's color scheme that we're currently using. To do that, let's go ahead and open our Lakeland.css sheet. There we've got it open now. Okay, let's navigate to the bottom of our CSS sheet here. And we're going to go ahead and enter the end of that. Now we're going to enter the following text for the main dab A link. Let's go ahead and enter that text as so. All right, there we go. We entered the ID value for the P element that contains the navigation bar text. And we created that A link pseudo class, which applies when the other three that we will enter do not. Now let's go ahead and enter code for the remaining three pseudo classes uh, that we saw there at the bottom of E2 in that table. So let's go ahead and enter that information as well. And you can use the figure E7 for what information to enter for the additional pseudo class states.
All right, that's entered now. Now we have our pseudo class styles for our navigation bar for links that have not been visited yet or does not currently have the mouse pointing over it. Uh, for our link to a document that's already been viewed, our pseudo class state for a link that has a mouse pointer that's currently over it, hovering over it, and one that the link is currently being clicked. All right, after we save our work, if you can go in and clear your browsing history, kind of reset your pages, and let's go ahead and open up our index.html in our browser again or refresh it. But if you clear all your browsing settings, you should reopen your browser. And uh, once you click on your index.html file to open it up again, you should see that you see the changes in the navigation bar. Let's go ahead and switch to that. I've already cleared mine. As you notice, as I hover over our hyperlinks, I am getting the white text that we set our hover pseudo class state for. So that's, I'm glad to see that that's working. And that's pretty much it, guys, for uh, our pseudo classes with CSS. So next, we're going to move into opening links in new windows or tabs. Good work so far on what you guys have done so far. By default, hyperlinks open in a new web page in the same window and tab as the source page. Now, sometimes it's alright that they open in the same page, but there are instances where we want to make sure that a page opens up as a new web page in a new window or tab. Just because, you know, like in an external site, it may be easier to look at and reference and then easily go back to where we were at in our current web page. We can control this by a using a link target that opens by including the target attribute of the A element with a value of blank. And we're going to add that in now into our index.html. So let's go back into our text editor, to our index.html, and let's work here. Let's go to our local weather link here, and let's put a target attribute. Let's set that target attribute set to blank for both the local weather and the directions. We're going to go here to the end of our URI there, put in the following attribute. That will create a blank. As you see there, we're also going to add that into our directions. Let's go to the end of that line, right before our label. And now we've added that. Let's go ahead and save our work. And let's check our local weather link in by opening our index.html again. As you guys can see here, our web page displaying the current weather opened up in a new tab on our browser. And go back, there it is. Same thing with our directions, and it opens up in a separate tab as well. So we know that the code that we just put in is working as expected. That's pretty much it for opening links in a new window or tab section. Let's move on. In this next section, we're going to be Linking to anchors, that's the part we're going to be working with in our text, and we are going to be using the rooms.html file. So let's go ahead and open that so you can see what we're working with here. So we're working with anchors here, and you know, sometimes instead of navigating to other pages, it's useful to work within the current web page that we have open. So instead of having links to outside pages, we're going to link to different named locations within our current page known as anchors. So let's go ahead and put some code into our page that creates a navigational bar on our page and then navigates using our anchors to different parts within that page. So let's go ahead and go to our rooms.html in our text editor and we'll work there. 
Alright, let's go to where we've got our data file stored, and we are going to open this with our text editor. Alright, now that we've got it open, let's go ahead and locate the H3 element containing the text sunroom. Now that we found our H3 tag of sunroom, let's go ahead and add an ID attribute with the value sun to the opening tag. Put a little space in here. That's all we need to do to create our ID attribute with the value of sun. Let's add the remaining ID attributes, read, tree, and garden. Read will be tied to read room, tree will be tied to tree house, and garden will be tied to garden room. Let's go ahead and add read. Let's see, the next one is tree for tree house there. We'll go down and do same thing for garden room. And we'll change that to garden. And now we should have all of our ID attributes set. Next thing we want to do is insert a blank line above the H3 element with our ID of read, and we're going to insert the following code. Then we're going to repeat that to add code above the H3 elements with the IDs tree garden and above the P element with the ID footer. So let's go ahead and go back to our text editor and enter that information as needed. Here's where our ID of read is. Let's enter. Let's go up to the line above that. And we'll get this properly aligned. There we go. Now let's do the remaining ones. There's Treehouse. We'll just go ahead and copy and paste. So we don't have to worry about our alignment. It should be automatic. There is tree, let's do garden. And above footer. There we go. Let's go ahead and add a blank line before the H3 element containing the sun room. Into the previous line, hit enter. Now let's put in our navigational bar code for our web page to use our anchors. And there we go. Now we have the completed code for our new navigational bar. to reference those links that are within our page. Now that you've got that entered, go ahead and save your work as always, now that we've made some major changes. And we are going to go back into our Lakeland cascading style sheet in our text editor. Alright, now that we've got our cascading style sheet opened up, let's go down to where we put our pseudo classes in earlier for our nav, and let's go ahead right above the main nav pseudo classes here. Let's enter a blank line. Let's go back up. Now we're going to enter all the code in that's in figure E13, which are style rules for generic line text and our style rules for links in our new navigation bar. So we'll put in some style rules for links that are not covered by ID specific selectors like we create, and then we'll put in the style rules for new links in our new navigation bar. So we'll enter that code. Our 
A links and our page navigation style rules for those links. Go ahead and save our work again. Now that we have saved our work again, let's go ahead and open up our Rooms HTML in our web browser again. All right, let's refresh it. You see we have our navigation bar up here now. And we have our links that we put in. Yeah, let's go ahead and test those links in the new navigation bar. And let's make sure that they also will use these back to the top links to make sure they work as well. That one works. Scroll down a little bit. We use this one down here. That one took us back to the top as expected. And we can't see garden room here, so I'll click that one and see if that takes me down. You can see my page changed. Back to the top. Not really seeing much because everything's present in this web page. But at least we know that our links are there and they're working. And you can see how the colors have changed. Once again, the style rules that we've put in, everything, all the work we just did in our linking to our anchors is working. And now we'll move on to the next section. That next session we're going to talk about is creating a link to a document. And we'll go to that section now, which we'll be using the reserve.html in our template. Most of the web links you'll see refer to other web pages. However, sometimes it's useful to create a link to another type of document, such as a Word document, an Excel document, PDF file. One thing you have to be careful with, though, of course, is that your end users have the application software on their computer to be able to open the files that you're referencing. So we can specify any type of computer readable document as a value for an H reference or href attribute. Let's go ahead and locate in our reserve document here where it says to read about reserving Lakeland reads for a wedding or a special event below the H2 element. Let's see we're right here. And let's put our cursor or insertion point to the right. I'm sorry, to the left of the word read. And let's insert our anchor tag there. To reference our weddings.pdf file that we have. And then let's Go to the end there after the word event. And let's close that tag. As always, let's go ahead and save now. I'd like to go ahead and open up the reserve.html in our web browser and let's see how that looks. Should be able to see that we have our link there. Click on that and our PDF file opens up. Now always make sure that the file is there. If our file would not have been there, obviously we'd have had an error. Also note that our PDF file opened up in our same tab. It did not open up in a separate tab. And you can go in and change that if you like, but for the purposes here, let's just leave it like that for now. We'll go back to our page and we'll go back into our text editor. Let's return to our Lakeland.css in our text editor. Let's save this work one more time. And then we're going to save a copy as 
llprint.css. Name of that. Save. And now we have that file, and we should see both now present. I didn't save this as a cascading style sheet, so I'll go back in there and I'll change the extension of that. As you can see, now that is a cascading style sheet, just like our Lakeland. Now that we have the file created, we want to remove all name value pairs that specify any type of color, including the border name value pair in the box rule. We're also going to change all the colors in style rules based on the pseudo classes to black, then we're going to save our work. Let's go ahead and remove this. Let's remove our background color there. Same thing here. Just continue to remove that information. said so that's including in the box. Because our background color for our printed output will be white, changing all the link colors to black increases the legibility in our printed formats. Go ahead and remove some more here. Get rid of this background. And this background. Background remove. Scroll on down. And let's change all of our colors and our style rules. Style rules based on our pseudo classes. We're gonna change all this to black. That should be it. Yep, we are at the end of our cascading style sheet there. So let's go ahead and save that again. Now that we're done with the section for creating a link to a document, let's go ahead and to the last section of our unit E. That's increasing navigational accessibility. In this last section, we are going to incorporate both of our navigational accessibility options using the skip link and the nav element for our uh, index.html file. So let's go ahead and jump into that and that will conclude unit E. Go ahead and open your index.html file and then we are going to locate the paragraph tag or p tag right under body entered there and now we've created a blank line. Let's go ahead and type our code for the target anchor and the skip line. 
Now that we've got that created, let's go down to the H1 element and delete the divisional tag, and we're going to type in nav tag instead. So instead of the div element here, change that to nav. Let's go back down here, we're going to change our close div element here to close nav. Just looking over our code, it looks like I forgot to add the ID tag here, or ID attribute, at the beginning of our paragraph here. So let's go ahead and go to our paragraph tag here. And let's add that attribute. Now we have it. Go ahead and hit save. Alright, now, now our code looks good. Now we have some script code to put in, which is a little bit more complex web page code written in another programming language. This is because recent versions of IE or Internet Explorer interpret semantic elements in unexpected ways. So we want to make sure we have compatibility here by entering the script. Yeah. So let's go ahead and add a blank line above the closing tag for the head element near the top of the document. And we're going to enter those three lines of code. Now that's the script code that we needed to put in. And other browsers will ignore that as just comments, but for IE or Internet Explorer, it will see that as code that it needs for the compatibility. And once again, now that we've added that code, let's go ahead and save our index.html file to save those changes. Now that we've saved our file, let's go ahead and go to our index.html in our browser and refresh that. And right away you can see that our changes come in effect and we have our skip navigation appearing. Go ahead and click skip navigation. So if we go ahead and drag the bottom border up to where only our H1 heading and our skip navigation button is showing, click skip navigation and you see that it goes to our main content, our first paragraph. Now we need to go back and repeat those steps one through six for our about us.html file and our reserve.html file. Adding the attribute step in step one to the h2 element in each document. Then we're going to repeat steps one through seven for our rooms.html file. Adding the attribute in step one to the h2 element, then replace the div and close div tags for the internal page nav bar with nav and nav, close nav. Then change the back to the top h reference values to our hashtag skip nav. Because the box elements are no longer in the first element on the page, you change the back to the top link targets to skip nav so the links take users all the way to the top of the browser window. Once we complete those steps, we're going to validate the code for all of our web pages and style sheets then make any necessary changes. Once you've completed this, go ahead and add those uh, on the web server to your files to publish the location for the index HTML in our browser so that we can navigate to your pages from anywhere on the web page or anywhere on the World Wide Web. One of the things you may notice is you may need to go back into your Creating Absolute Links section and step nine here where we added our navigation information to the pages about us rooms and reserve so that our navigation bar is across all pages when you make your changes in your about us document you should see that it will go from this Do this with your changes. Reserve.html file 
should go from looking like this. To this. And then this is how your rooms.html file should look when you're completed. Once again, remember to validate your code. And as you're working through your end of the chapter work, please remember to validate your code for your in independent challenge files and make sure that they are on the web server and that when you post in Blackboard, you give me a proper URL that I can use to paste into a web browser and navigate to your pages. Great job on all your work so far, guys. Keep it up, and I hope uh, the tutorial helped having a little bit of video to go along with the steps. Take care, and uh, always remember to feel free to contact me with any questions, rmartinjr at ivytech.edu. Have a great day, guys.